Hello and welcome to Audiobook Reviews. This review will be on the first book in the Thomas Covenant, The Unbeliever Trilogy, Lord Fowl's Bane by Stephen R. Donaldson. I picked this up used in the pictured box set and thought I would give it a try. I had obviously heard of Donaldson, but had never actually read any of his work, so I thought this was a good jump in. This was his first published series. I know there's, I think, another trilogy as well, uh, but we're starting here at the beginning. And I have to say, the book just, I'm, I'm very torn on it. Um, so we'll be probably going back and forth a little bit, but it was, it, it was interesting. And there, there are definitely some things I liked and some things I did not. And altogether, I'm, I'm really honestly still at this point, even as of recording this view, not 100% sure of what my final opinion is. I think I might need to finish the first trilogy before I can arise at a more of a, a stable, actual final opinion, so to speak. So this book starts out with Thomas Covenant. He is our main character, and he is in the real world. He is a leper. And the first section of the book feels like a completely different type of novel and story than what ends up happening. We're given a look into Covenant's life, his story, how he got leprosy, all he went through. He's done his best to learn about it and, and try to survive his family left him he's completely shunned by his community and essentially lives alone and occasionally will even try to go into the town he lives out in the country type area and it's just completely shunned and it feels like he's gonna go crazy and almost is at the point where he wants to kill himself if he didn't want to survive so much more that's not a spoiler, that's the basis for this novel, is this character who is so incredibly bitter and feels like they've had everything taken away from him. It's this character, and that's who we're introduced to. I found myself engrossed right away in his story, and that's where the first thing, it's it's kind of a good and a bad thing. It was written so well that when we switch into him being basically taken into a fantasy world, it was an odd feeling for me because I felt like it was a completely different story that Donaldson was telling. And then all of a sudden we're transported into this fantasy world. Now, I think partially that plays because he wanted you to very much feel like the world was real and then be trans formed into something completely different, which obviously is how Thomas Covenant is feeling. He's brought into this completely new world. And he, as well as myself, uh, are stuck in this feeling of this isn't actually real. Now, normally, if a story pretty early on makes you feel like the world where most of this is going to be taking place isn't real, that would be a pretty negative thing. And it definitely starts that way for me as well. But I, I think, once again, that seemed to be kind of part of the intent here. So a little bit odd just for the start. And it's not like it's an odd premise that somebody's brought into the fantasy world. We've seen that. And this series has been out for some time. And it, this is something that's been done in other works, many works since. So it's not the story odd in general. It's the way the story is written, which gets into something that I definitely have to honestly praise, which is the prose and the writing style of Donaldson. Uh, and the About the author in the back, it mentions that he has a master's in English. And yeah, I believe that 100%. Uh, I haven't read a book for quite some time where there's actually so many different vocabulary type words where you're thinking, I don't think I've ever heard this word in my life before, uh, but it is really, really well written. It does give kind of the feel of more classic fantasy versus modern fantasy with the way it's written, and I'll touch a little bit more on that as well here shortly also, but the prose is phenomenal. The descriptions of both the real world and the fantasy world 
that Covenant is transported to really do make you feel like you can see and feel what's going on. So that is a huge, huge point of praise concerning this book. That said, I feel like despite the prose and the huge effort of world building, it actually does make the story overall fall a little bit flat for me. Now, it's well written and the overall story is good, but so much of the book is focused on world building the land, this fantasy world that Thomas has been transported to. Talking about all the different pieces, you get lots of bits of history through his conversations with the characters. Now, it's not done clumsily. It's You have somebody who's a complete stranger to this world brought in, so naturally he's going to have some questions uh, about it. But based on his character and him not thinking anything is real for basically the entire book, I also feel like there were some liberties taken with how much he would really be interested in knowing as well. Now, all of that said, I am going to get in a little bit to spoilers of the book at this point. And this is going to be a little bit different than normal because I'm going to actually basically give my version of what I thought this book was going to be and noting that this opinion very well may be too early because of the fact that I have not finished anything other than this book in the first trilogy. But knowing that there are two more books and there's another trilogy afterwards, I still feel like I'm going to come out this way. So at this point, I will be getting into some spoilers because I'm going to talk about some parallels that I noticed and my thoughts in general. So this is going to be a little bit different. It will spoil some pieces, but I'm not going to be digging in super deep to the plot that happened. I'm going to be digging deep into the plot that I felt like was going to happen or even maybe should have happened. So we have Thomas Covenant. I talked about the general kind of dichotomy between the two stories. It does feel like two very distinct stories. Uh, the writing style is very good, but the writing style of this real world person dealing with leprosy, completely bitter, hates the world, and doesn't think they'll ever be able to feel any sort of happiness again. Them in a fantasy world, they're put into a completely different role. The stories are very different. To me, the strength of the first chunk of the book going over that i think should have been explored more actually now it is a recurring point throughout that he's a leper and he feels he's unclean he's constantly saying he can't be a hero he can't do anything because he's, he's a leper in this fantasy world that happens quite a lot but more so what i was really expecting at the end of the book was he wakes up and realizes it was all a dream and he was right and none of it was real and it was more of his mind conjuring this thing that he needed to keep him alive in the real world so with what happens he goes into town to pay his phone bill it's his last kind of rebellion against being shunned and he finds out like some of his other bills it's already been paid because the people are basically just trying to make sure he has no reason to come into the town he ends up talking to this kind of homeless vagabond type character who brings up a question of philosophy and asks if a person is in a world that they don't believe is real and they choose not to act or to act, are they a coward or not, essentially. And I'm, I'm very much paraphrasing here, but brings up this ethical philosophy question saying, if somebody doesn't believe what around them is, is real, if they don't act, they don't try to help, are they being a coward or not? Because they don't think it's real. That coupled with the start of this book made me think that was really what was going to be explored. And it was to an extent. Thomas Covenant the whole time does not really believe that it's real until pretty much the very end. He kind of finally has the moment where he does believe that it may be real, but for the most part, he's convinced that if he accepts it, he will go insane and basically die. He'll be here forever because if he agrees that it's real, that's what he sees happening. 
and he kind of at the end of the story does admit it's real and even the the fade out everything around him the land becomes more solid and it's him that's fading away implying that it was real but he's fading away back to his own world not the world around him fading because it wasn't real to begin with he uh after talking to the vagabond he walks and a police car is coming and he thinks it's going to hit him and he falls over hits his head and that sets up at the very end of the book he wakes up he's apparently been unconscious for a few hours and he's still thinking about what happened at the end of the book once again it appears that stephen donaldson is saying the land is real there are more stories in the land it makes sense that that's the case but for me the the more compelling story was almost no it's not because there were a lot of parallels that i thought were going to be brought up a bit more let's start with thomas covenant is placed into the land the land is somewhere where not only are the people all kind of one but they're one with the land they have this reverence and this love and they just can't imagine darkness basically even though there is lord foul and the despiser and the corrupter there is this character it's for them everything is about peace and love and taking care of the earth and everyone has this affinity with other people and with the land and they can see when something's healthy and they can see when something is not it's this world that's so very different from where thomas covenant comes from but it's a reflection to me of how he views the world and how the world views him. He goes and he sees everyone that's healthy and happy, and it makes him even more bitter because when people look at him, they just see a leper. They see his sickness, and he's nothing more. They want him to shun. So a world where literally health is visible seemed very much to be a parallel. The main driver of the story is his wedding ring which is white gold which apparently is through prophecy supposed to be able to use wild magic and either help or destroy the land the help or destroy you know that's something we've seen a lot in fantasy too but it focuses on the wedding band and a recurring theme in his psyche is one of the things that really kind of crushed him beyond the leprosy and learning to deal with that and know that he had nothing but pain and sickness for the rest of his life was the fact that his wife left him and he's incredibly bitter and can't believe that she would do that and take their child and go and so having the total focus be his ring and having that be the thing that's the power because that was the most important event in his life so of course that's going to be the important thing when he's in town, he's looking at these teenage girls and kind of lusting at, after them and just thinking they're just showing off and I'm impotent and I can't do anything. And who is the first person he meets in the land? A young teenage girl who he later rapes. And I guess the question is, well, if he didn't think it was real, is it still wrong? And really, that part is just kind of glossed over. It's it comes back later but for a large portion of the story it's just kind of like any other thing he's done and he doesn't seem to see it as being particularly wrong until the end granted it does come up as kind of a turning point for him later which i will talk a little bit more about but once again fits in with how he was thinking and in general the villain this lord foul who's this kind of unseen force who wants to corrupt and destroy the land he immediately, upon Thomas being brought into the world, gives him a message. He's supposed to go out to the lords of this land and tell them that they will all be dead and he, all life will be over in seven times seven years. So 49 years. And no matter what they do, that will happen. But if they don't go on this quest and get this staff that this cave white, who he's controlling, has taken they'll be dead even sooner the whole villain the whole quest really to me shows a parallel with the villain is his disease it's brought up specifically in the early portion of the book that leprosy is not fatal on its own if you're very careful don't let yourself get infections you can live 
a relatively normal life span. Uh, maybe not a normal life, but a normal life span and can move on. But if you don't take care of yourself, you're not completely vigilant like Thomas has shown to be early on, not doing his self checks, it's very easy for your life to end much quicker. It's also specifically mentioned that often what happens is the people who have leprosy, it's not that they are physically sick, they just give up. They can't find a reason to keep on living. The problem is Thomas was on the cusp of finally kind of giving in. So he needed to go find a reason to keep living, to survive. And he didn't really have any of that in the real world. Everything had just been gone. His last attempt to still go out and be among people and have any reason to do so was taken away from him before this story begins. I That's the biggest parallel, I think, between them. And just in general, his actions and some of the other pieces. And a lot of that seems to be very intentional with the parallels, which once again, to me, leads me to this world is not actually real. This is all something in his mind that he has to go through to decide he wants to survive. And he goes through the entire book, really not wanting to help, not wanting to be involved, and then finally gets to the point where he decides he has to try to help. He At one point, he realizes kind of all that he's done. He finally has that switch where he thinks this is real. At least to him, it is real now. And he realizes what he's done. He realized he raped that girl, what he did to her mother who had to travel with him, how he's just kind of not really cared and how he's killed. Granted, he killed cave whites who were the villains, but he's done all these things that kind of the weight of it hits him and he decides to keep going. But even at the end, he doesn't want to actually fight to save anyone because he doesn't want to kill even the villains. And he still seems to be struggling with it. But he ends up, I guess, technically <laughs> saving the day uh, before the cave white who called him is killed. And that's when he has to go back to his land. And all he can think to himself as he wakes up is at least they're okay. They made it. They're going to survive. I succeeded in that. He kind of found something he could latch on to whether or not it's real. Now, the point I haven't mentioned that is very important to this whole parallel into this world is the character of Thomas Covenant is an author. He apparently was a best-selling author, and that also kind of went away with the leprosy because he was too bitter to keep writing what he had been writing. Now, we're not told what kind of author he is, but I think we can figure out that he was a fantasy author, and he is writing these positive fantasy stories with heroes, and not only is that why he's able to imagine in his head such a huge world of fantasy, but it's also why he rails so hard against being a hero, because he doesn't believe in heroes anymore. That is my take, and I was waiting for something more to be said of that the entire book, and it didn't really happen. The ending seems kind of abrupt, and like I said, the only thing I could think is you're supposed to realize the world was real. He did wake up, he was unconscious, but the world is real, what he did was real, and I just don't feel like that's what should have been. Uh, considering there are gonna be more books, and they're gonna be, I'm assuming he's gonna go back to the land some way or another, I gather that that is the premise we're leaving. But the final piece I was waiting, and they didn't bring this up, so this probably plays once again to it being real, but at one point, he has to get rid of his clothes and his boots, and he even thinks to himself, if I wake up and I'm in my clothes, that means this is none of this is going to be real, and that's why he wanted to, to keep his clothes, essentially, so that he could still kind of hedge, not believe it, but also have that speculation that maybe it was real, but he's given uh, new clothes and he's given specifically a white robe. And then at, they're going through a forest and ends up having these weird patterns of moss that almost seem like symbols or text or something. And he can never figure out what it is. I was waiting for he wakes up in a hospital wearing the gown that's like white with like patterns of green or something. And it wasn't mentioned, but that was what I was waiting to. Just once again, 
pulling into the fact that it's not real. A couple of other quick notes is for the bulk of the book, he never realizes he's hungry unless somebody offers him food. Then all of a sudden he's very hungry, hungry, thirsty, anything. And for the most part, he's just kind of pulled along. He feels like he has to go. And he often, when something's wrong, just knows what to do. Just feels this is what I need to do, even if he doesn't have a reason to. Which once again brings me to my thought that he is driving the narrative because it's all in his head. So with that said, I know that was a little bit unorthodox, but those are really what my thoughts were with this book. And I will be not probably immediately next, but I will be reading the other two books at some point. And I will definitely see if my opinion and my thoughts change. Overall, like I said, it was very well written, focused a bit more on world building than plot. The plot was pretty simple quest traveling to go do one specific thing and so fell a little bit flat in points but i read such a deeper story into it and i don't know yet if that is correct or not it doesn't seem like it is but the way i read into it kind of gave me a little bit extra but then also kind of made me sad at the end when it wasn't confirmed that i was correct so i'll have to see if anything does change that said, I think this is the kind of book, if you like kind of old school fantasy, um, it's going to be a, a pretty good book for you. It is really interesting with the character not being likable at all. So with a lot of people liking kind of the grim dark, this definitely isn't really grim dark, despite some of the things that happen. But with that being really popular, if you like the kind of darker characters, not the pure hero, you like kind of classic style, Tolkien-esque fantasy going on a quest, journeying, that sort of thing, this is probably a book that you would enjoy. That said, this has been a review of Lord Fowl's Bane. If you enjoyed this review and want to see other reviews, please feel free to subscribe.